The K Jazz Show Sundays on Kofifi FM 97.2. The Five Sonics is a meditative, immersive jazz group from Los Angeles, led by Seth Bordian from uh, Los Angeles, of course. And their deeply soulful music draws on jazz and classical influences, together with you know the experiences of Bordian's own musical stuff and relationships, including you know introduction to spirituality, yoga, and the philosophy at a young age, creating something uniquely his own. From the love of sounds of the upright bass and the musics of Charles Mingus, John, and Alice Cole train including duke ellington seth immersed himself in the music combining the love with intense personal study alongside collaborations tours and recordings with various artists and we fast forward this to his explorations that led him to the beautiful expressions that is his five sonics project and of course bassist seth joins us this afternoon on the k-jazz show as we explore the music of this incredible project and we also get to know him a little better seth welcome to coffee fm 97 and welcome back to south africa thank you so much it's great to be with you thank you for joining us i want to talk about you know who seth is let's go back there you know who is seth and when did seth fall in love with music well i've always loved music it was uh in my household we always had uh music playing lots of different styles my mother was a yoga teacher so we listened to a lot of indian classical music and devotional music but also bob marley and the beatles every kid has to listen to the beatles a little bit you know and i always wanted to sing along to everything so and i would go to the piano and try to figure out the songs and play the guitar so it was it was just always a part of my life pretty much as as far back as i could remember but very casually like uh, informally you know i wasn't formally trained uh, as a kid yeah i uh, was till i was a teenager that i sought out formal training brother you were also part of a punk rock band you know and that was almost like your entry into music how did that influence you know when we talk about the artist that you've become and your sound definitely uh that was my first entree into making music with other people uh i wasn't singer in a punk rock band and uh i don't know if i brought a lot of the sound with me but certainly the feeling of community um the community in the washington dc area where i grew up was very strong Yeah. um and uh very political and very um you know it was a lot of action you know political action going on and uh there was just a lot to gather around and uh i think that was really important for me as a kid and i i think i brought that forward with me and it's something that i still really value is the community around music the people making the music the people listening and coming to the shows and supporting and so i think that's one of the biggest things that came from my punk rock days which was yeah. really just from maybe uh, about 16 till i was maybe 19 or 20 i was doing that and then i fell in love with the upright bass and that i sort of dropped everything <laughs> and just played bass for many many years. Yeah, cuz that was my next thing, you know. I mean, you moved to California and you met jazz. Let's reflect yeah. on that time. It was a beautiful time. I kind of uh felt like I was um doing something impossible, but it was working, you know. It's like people kind of thought I was crazy to move to California 3000 miles from where I was born and pick up this instrument that, you know, very difficult and, you know, play a music that I was very different than what I had been playing and uh I don't know, I think that gave a little fuel to my fire, you know, people's doubt and uh mix with my own passion and just young energy, mm. you know. Mm. spent you know 8 10 12 hours a day practicing posing playing gigs and you know i just uh really delved in it was a beautiful time i lived in santa cruz california at the time mm. which is sort of a small beach town but there is a lot of great musicians um i got to play with the uh, smith dobson who's a fantastic piano player he played uh with a kind of a who's who of people um and his whole family all musicians and they kind of took me in and uh taught me a lot his whole family is musicians so uh yeah it was just a great time learned from a lot of masters you know and uh got inspired for about 10 years uh, pretty much the decade of the 90s mm. delved into jazz music and classical music too i studied the and played in the orchestra and really wanted to learn um how to do expression with a bow and 
So I, I did a lot of that as well.
along this timeline, the five sonics are born. You know, and they are an instrumental group with an introspective, some call improvisational approach to creating lush music or an immersive soundscape. I want you to unpack this. What does this all mean, though? You know, to somebody who's hearing it for the first time, what are we talking about? Yes, I think I think what we're talking about is music that, when you hear it, it hopefully transports you somewhere um, and to like a peaceful place. And that I'm I'm hoping is more of a emotional music than intellectual. So a lot of times, uh, jazz, even some of my favorite jazz, can be very intellectual and very it can spark you in that way but this music is more designed to um, connect on an emotional level i feel and uh it is also maybe uh inspired by the feminine aspect of music also which is sometimes in jazz it can be very masculine you know mm -hmm. and yeah and fiery and which i love a lot of my favorite music is like that and i enjoy playing like that but for this project, I wanted to um, really go into the inspirations of people like Alice Coltrane, who brought this beautiful, powerful feminine energy, you know, into the music, which I think we can all access. You know, it's there for all of us, but uh, it's maybe missing from a lot of uh, a lot of music. So mm. a lot of times I feel like I get inspired by what I want to hear that I'm not hearing, you know that I'm not hearing around me. So uh, that was that was part of the the uh, impetus to start this group. Yeah. Of course, Coffee Fee FM, we are in conversation with Seth Young Ford. He is the founding member of the Five Sonics. And he joins us this Sunday, you know, as we explore music from their first and second project, The Cradle and Octava. And I think, Seth, I'm... I'm I'm interested in the creative process, you know, for these projects. And I love the fact that, you know, you just before we went on the musical break, you touched on, you know, the musics of Alice Coltrane and so on and so forth. And it is almost as if you're moving through frequencies and they are colliding with sonics, you know, and they birth a whole new signature sound, you know, when we created, you know, both The Cradle, which was your first album, and now Octava. Let's 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 go back to that process and what inspired the creative process for both projects. Uh it really is the sounds. You're right. It's the frequencies and um the the sonics, as you <laughs> if you will. Um, and the feeling that I feel like that you can relate to people through that. And then when you mix that with the rhythms, and our music has a lot of ostinato rhythms, the repeating bass lines and things that um i think with the certain frequencies and harmonies on top can um, create an atmosphere for someone to connect and to connect to themselves and hopefully to everyone else you know um and that that's a big part of the inspiration um and i was listening to music from alice coltrane and pharaoh sanders i wasn't very uh, aware that there was so much of this music happening in the modern world and especially in england it seems like there's a lot of this music so in some ways i was a little bit in a vacuum with these old sounds older older recordings that i've had in my collection since the 90s you know mm. and uh getting inspiration from that and getting inspiration also from i live in los angeles it's very uh there's sound everywhere you know i hear the ice cream truck going by playing beethoven <laughs> sometimes and there's there's Mexican regional music being played throughout my neighborhood, actual bands, you know, I hear the brass and I hear the rhythms from uh, Mexico and uh, all of that is in there too, you know. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Of course, you know, we want to also know, you know, um, when I was getting ready to have this conversation with you just, a, you know, an hour or two ago, you know, there was a yoga conversation that I had to have, you know, with, with, you know, the stuff that's written about you. Let's talk about that, you know, and how the yoga got to, you know, be infused, as it were, you know, into the music. It's true. My mother was a yoga teacher, so I don't remember a time where I wasn't practicing yoga in, in some way, you know, mm. through meditation and uh, breathing techniques and uh, my father also was a teacher of Aikido, which is a sort of nonviolent martial art that uh, uses a lot of different types of energy training as well. Mm. 
And uh, that was a part of my life from the beginning. Um, and then I, I think I stepped away from it for a while, as kids do. You know, we step away from the teachings of our parents. And then at a certain point, I realized as I was playing bass, I was always using these techniques of relaxation and breathing. And that when I did, I felt like the music would go deeper, you know. And uh, Phisonics is really the first project where I thought, you know, I'm going to use this, I'm going to allow this to be a part of the music, part of the composition practice. I would sort of uh, get myself into a state with breathing and relaxing and then start to play the piano to work on these compositions or to sing. Often I will sing as a form of composing. Mm. Uh, And I think it just sort of set it up so that that became part of the music all the way through from composing to uh, recording and performing the music live as well.
Jazz Show, Sundays on Kofifi FM 97.2.
a musical break and we were listening to invocation on the project of tava and um you know it kind of got me thinking there's a similar you know maybe i, I don't know i don't want to call it a, a signature you know but it is a there's a there's a matthew hall Saul, and gondwana feel when we listen to music like this let's talk about the relationship there you know with with matthew hall Saul. i first discovered matthew um i finished octava no sorry i finished the cradle uh, which was the first record. And um, I was sort of looking for like-minded people, you know, to share the music with and see uh, where it could, it could go, where I could take it. And I sent the music to, to Matthew and I discovered his music and I listened to all of his many, many albums and yeah. all that. So the, the artists on his label and uh, luckily he felt a kinship with us and took us on he re-released the cradle um on his label as a uh, deluxe edition with some additional tracks and uh, it's been great we collaborate on um sort of the concept of the record and the sounds mm. um and he gives me of course 
freedom on uh, the actual content, the sound, the uh, the style, and the compositions. But we work a lot on like the sort of big picture stuff, which has been really helpful. And uh, he has such a beautiful concept and uh, approach to his music that it's been very inspiring. He really wants the music to connect with people and uh, and give people a sense of calm and beauty and right in line with what I want to do. So, yeah, it's been really a great relationship. He's helped us get to a lot more ears as well, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, a beautiful connection. I think a really even be, even better, you know, musical relationship because then all of a sudden the meeting of the minds happen, you know, and you all speak the same language. It's truly, truly wonderful. You know, I was introduced to the music or the music of uh, uh, Fisonics through the composition "We Walk Through the Gardens of Our Ancestors." What a striking title! Shared this piece last Sunday. Let's talk about that one. Yes, that I um, I composed that as a solo bass piece originally. I was just listening to a lot of Irish music. Actually, I have uh, Irish heritage. Mm. Um, I was being inspired by some of these beautiful folk melodies, and uh, it made me think about my ancestors. You know, and then maybe even the same day, I was walking around my garden, which I live in Los Angeles, a uh, very urban place, but I. I have a humble home, but luckily we have a large garden that's uh, about 100 years old. The house is about 100 years old. And I'm looking at these trees, these plants that have been here for about the same amount of time. And I thought, well, my ancestors, the people that came before me that lived here planted these trees so the house could be in the shade and, you know, mm. they give up air and I it just really uh was inspired by that and I started to think about well what am I planting what's what's my garden that I'm planting for the people that come after me and uh, I think in my wow. case it's you know that's my garden that I'm planting a wonderful project I think everybody seems to be captivated by that one particular composition so I think we echo the sentiments when we think of you know what what where we come from from ancestry and and where who we are today and what are we doing for tomorrow? Really, really great conversation to be had, very, very apt during this time, you know. And, you know, with a meditative sound, I suppose that draws on jazz and classical influences, and it's combined with elements of yoga and meditation. You know, Fisonics is making waves, I think, globally, you know, with this sublimely beautiful project, Octava. You know, I, I want us to talk about, you know, the story behind this one, you know, and 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 the project itself. Yes, Octava. Uh, the concept of that is uh, the octave, which we find in music. Uh, you know, we have the same note, but one octave higher, you know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And the idea is to get to this next do, the higher one, throughout our lives, we have struggles, we have challenges and triumphs, and uh, we have dissonances, and and then release to consonances. So it's about personal growth through the idea of ascending the scale. Um, and there just happens to be eight songs on the album. So and when you get to the end, there's a song called New You, which is about arriving at this new place. It's still you. Yeah, but it's a version of you, you're vibrating at a higher, higher level. And I hope I think that we've all experience that in our lives you know and so it's just a uh, kind of a meditation on that yeah. yeah you know thank you for that you know it kind of puts it into perspective anyway um i i'm i'm very interested you know uh, i'm talking fire sonics and the different members now you know who you travel with who are all these people and and let's talk about how you you brought the project together creatively you know with everyone in the room because i can imagine you know there's just all these opinions and all these conversations and all these creative juices and, and things happening in the air you know let's talk about all of that you know creating octava anyway yes well uh the band is yeah very important because it's such improvisational uh it's a conversations music so uh on the reeds we have sylvan carton who i've played with for maybe 15 years or so um we lived in the san francisco bay area together um, and then we just happened to move within a mile of each other in Los Angeles. So I just knew we needed to make music. We always connected the way he plays the flute and uh, saxophone is it's always stirred something in me, you know, mm. I felt the emotion from that. So it's great to have him. And then uh, Mitchell Yoshida plays the keys. And uh, he and I were in a band together called Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. 
Um, we traveled the world. We got to also back up a lot of different musicians, uh, including uh, Rodriguez. A lot of South African people I know know the music of Rodriguez. And Josh Colazzo plays drums, and he also was with us in Edward Sharp. So the three of us had played a lot of music together. Um, and I knew the sound that we could make, the bass, the drums, and the keys. And uh, as I was writing the music for Fisonics, I knew that they would get it. You know, I knew that they would help me create this sound and that there's there's a composition, there's there's melodies and harmonies and rhythms that I've come up with. But all the in-between stuff where the magic happens, I knew that these musicians could help me make that happen which is mm. the most important. It's the part in between the notes, you know, that is where the where the breath is and where the where the real magic of the music is. So mm. very fortunate to have have them playing with me. Thank you. 
incredible ensemble, you know, sir, as, you know, as one takes a listen, these, these, these conversations that, you know, you are having sonically that we are having with you, you know, as uh, the band members and as Phi Sonics. And, you know, I, I, it, it often kind of makes one want to think about this. And of course, you know, I think in 2023, you know, Seth, we don't want to classify music as a specific thing, but uh, we still have that one person that within or a group of people, maybe, you know, as it were, who would want to know, you know, from a perspective of how do we classify, you know, the sound of Phisonics, you know, is it jazz? Is it neo, neo jazz? If there is such a thing, is it, is it Afro jazz? Where do we place you? Yes, that's a difficult conversation to have because uh, <laughs> honestly, every every um, every name that we can put on it doesn't feel quite right. Is maybe it is all of those things that you just said, mm. um, and also different people have a different idea of, of what is jazz. You know, it could be Stanley Turrentine or it could be Kenny G you know it's just very different uh, emotions come from or Duke Ellington or you know it's all very different so yeah I like to say that I'm inspired by all these types of music um including definitely African music yeah um, which is the birthplace of all of that jazz you know um Caribbean music Mexican music that I hear from my neighbors. Um, I'm inspired by all of these things. I don't know what to call us, though. Mm. Uh, I, I let the record label decide. <laughs> <laughs> they like to call it spiritual jazz. Um, it, sounds, it sounds nice, a spiritual jazz, but it kind of leans towards the other kind of jazz, too. So I think for the purpose of this conversation, let's just leave it as amazing music. What do you think? I love that. Yes, mm -hmm. music. Yeah, music yeah. That, that connects. That's what I want it to be. Yes. And that deserves to be heard, as my, my my esteemed colleague has always said. Now, as we wrap things up, you know, way too from here for Five Sonics and way too from here for, for Seth, you know, um, possibly a world tour, including the city of Johannesburg. I would love that. I would love to be in Johannesburg making music and listening to music and learning from a beautiful culture there. Um We've been working on a tour, um, hopefully in Europe. That's where we've had a lot of uh, success, the record labels there. And um, we've been playing just here in California. Um, we don't have a lot booked right now. I've been working on the next album, which these days, you know, you an album just comes out and then you need to make sure you're already working on the next one because it takes a long time. So I am I am uh, composing and making demos and getting ready to record. Hopefully this winter, uh, it's almost winter for us. So yeah. I'm hoping this winter we will make record number three, and then in uh, 2024 do some more touring. Yeah. Well, well, and of course, speaking of more music, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of listeners now find you on the social not even in fact the social but then the streaming services but what happens to the rest of us who still prefer having physical copies seth where do we get those from ah that's a good question i think um you can ask your local record short store uh any shop can hopefully um order them from k7 or red eye uh those those are distributors that Gondwana Records is working with. You can check also on Discogs. There's a lot of stores on Discogs that will ship to wherever you are in the world. Yeah, it's available. There's You can have it on CD. Um, there's a clear vinyl. There's black vinyl, different editions. So, yeah. so yes, full copies are out there. Well, we'll go online and definitely make it happen, of course. And I'll be sharing some of the links that Seth has mentioned, you know, on our social media pages. So do not worry. We will have, in fact, we have your back covered already. Seth, thank you so much, sir, you know, for joining us this Sunday. And of course, we look forward to listening further and listening even closer to the music of Fi. And uh, hopefully we see you on our stages in the near future. And this is from our lips to the universe, you know. Beautiful. Thank you so much. He is the founder and bassist of the meditative immersive jazz group from Los Angeles. Talking to us from Los Angeles, Seth Ford Young, and he's on the K Jazz Show. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.